Hi friends, today I just brought Quasimodo from the Hunchback of Notre Dame into the spotlight. Quasimodo is the bell ringer for the gorgeous cathedral in Paris. As many know, especially those of you who have seen some of my previous videos, The Hunchback of Notre Dame is based off of Victor Hugo's book Notre Dame de Paris. The Quasimodo from the book isn't that different from the Quasimodo that we see in the movie. They both have the same physical features and they're both gentle and kind and yearn to be with other people. All my life I watch them as I hide up here alone. However, the young bell ringer's story is very different in the book. Born to a Romani family, Quasimodo is abandoned as a baby on the foundling's bed at the cathedral. His family abandoned him because they believed he was being possessed by a demon, a typical belief for any child born with some kind of deformity. But I'd never fit in out there. I'm not normal. Here, he is adopted by the young archdeacon Claude Frollo, who feels pity for the child. He names the baby Quasimodo. Now, in the movie we're told that he's named Quasimodo because it means half-formed, but in the book, Frodo names him Quasimodo after the day he was found on, Quasimodo Sunday. Quasimodo has immense strength and therefore becomes the bell ringer for the cathedral. However, this makes him go deaf because of the really loud sounds of the bells. And who's this? Big Marie. Hello! His adoptive father teaches him a sort of sign language so that he can still communicate with other people. One day, Frodo sees the beautiful Esmeralda and he orders that Quasimodo kidnaps her. Quasimodo does as he is told, but he also falls immediately in love with the gorgeous and kind girl. Oh, if I could do this, you wouldn't find me dancing in the streets for coins. But you're a wonderful dancer. Both of them become very good friends and one day Quasimodo hands Esmeralda a whistle that he explains is shrill enough that he can still just about hear it. One night, Quasimodo hears the whistle and runs to Esmeralda's room where he finds a man trying to rape her. He throws the man against the wall and that's when he realises it's his adoptive father, Frollo. <coughs> Meanwhile, Esmeralda manages to escape the cathedral but she is later recaptured and set to hang in front of Notre Dame. Quasimodo watches heartbroken as Esmeralda is hanged, all the while having to listen to Frollo laugh and exclaim that she deserves it for being a witch. In rage, Quasimodo takes his father and throws him over the balcony and watches him land dead in the middle of the square. Once the audience who was present for Esmeralda's hanging is gone, Quasimodo climbs back down and finds her dead body. He lays down next to Esmeralda's body in the ditch, takes her into his arms and lets himself die. Obviously, there's loads of big differences between the book and the movie, and most importantly, the ending is completely different. In the movie, Esmeralda isn't executed and Quasimodo isn't quite at fault for Frollo's death. And though Quasimodo doesn't get the girl in the movie, he does give his blessing to Esmeralda and Phoebus's relationship and he ends up with two lifelong friends. Do you like that Esmeralda ended up with Phoebus? Or would you rather that she would have ended up with Quasimodo instead? Please tell me in the comment section down below. If you want to see any of the other videos I've done, you can click here to find out about Esmeralda's story, or you can click here and find out why Rapunzel didn't leave her tower sooner. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, and I hope you consider subscribing. Until next time, happy bubbles!